G'day guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Wildcard. Thank you for watching my contents. I really do appreciate it. You are here because it's Tuesday and it's time to read the news. So last week in rugby, um, let's start in Australia first, okay? So first up, Australia obviously has some grievances against the, ref the way the referees uh, is, is kind of operating at the moment. The biggest grievance that Australian rugby is having is the time wasting, they feel like the game is too slow, uh, and they have basically come up with a, some trial laws that's going to be um, trialed in uh, some really low grade games that's going to be played in the upcoming games. So yeah, let's go through some of these trial laws, and uh, it's going to blow your mind. So first up, the the law is going to be you know tried in two matches between the Presidents 15 and Queensland Reds developmental squad and uh, it's gonna be run by uh, the great Nick Berry and Damon Murphy so the two greatest referees in Australia is gonna be running uh, overseeing these new rules now this is his important part the new rules obviously they they wanted to speed out the game which I do agree there are some areas I feel like they should speed it up a little bit um, so so what they're gonna be doing in the, the trial law is they're gonna be. There's gonna be a time limit on removing the ball from the back of the rock, packing the scrum, taking penalties, restarting conversions, and delivering lineouts. So, uh, removing the ball from the rock. First of all, I don't feel like there was that much time wasting that. My team have to set up for a box kick. It may take a couple of seconds, but I don't know how you're gonna time. And plus also like the amount of rocks that's on the, on the field. I don't know how you can time every rock to make sure that the ball gets out quickly enough. But obviously if it's really slow, the referee already kind of like, yeah, like, you know, tells the player to get the ball out. So maybe have a clock to get exact uh, to get that out. It's a thing, but whatever. Uh, packing the scrums, I do think this 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 needs to be, needs to be speed up. There, needs, there should be a shot clock. Uh, the play, If you go watch some of the older games in rugby, the scrum gets packed and done in like 30 seconds. Like, it's, it's no joke. Everyone gets there, like, immediately packs the scrum. Nowadays, the players take a really long time to pack the scrum. Uh, I do feel like that should be speed up a bit. Or, or if they don't want to speed that up for safety issues, because they do have safety concerns, uh, I do think that they should just pause the clock. Like, just stop the clock until the, the scrum is engaged, right? Or set. They call it set now. So until the scrum is set, uh, the, scot the clock should just be paused, just for safety. But they're going to have a clock on it to rush things up. We'll just see how they go. Taking penalties. Uh, this is a little bit confusing to me. Because um, the rugby laws already has a time limit on taking a penalty. That is 60 seconds. Uh, so maybe just read the law book. Uh, anyway, restart. Yes, sometimes the team takes too long to walk back. Again, instead of have a clock from team restarting the game. I think it's best to just stop the clock for the team to walk to the half back to the halfway because sometimes the TMO is checking for um for like you know replays or whatnot uh there's a lot of confusion go there's a lot of stuff going on between the the resets uh and also I do think that if the team that just conceded a try or whatever do need a bit of mo moment to regather you gotta allow them that at uh, the moment to to kind of regather themselves and I, yeah I, I don't know I think they should just stop the clock instead of putting a time limit but Sure, I do do think sometimes team try to uh, run the clock down a little bit there. Uh, conversions again. I'm pretty sure. No, no, no. Pretty sure. I know for a fact that you, there's uh, a time limit on already a time limit on taking a conversion. That is a minute and a half. A, a person, a, a kicker is allowed a minute and a half to take the conversion. Sure, it's 30 seconds longer than the penalty, which is only a minute. For some reason, there's two different times for that. But maybe they can reduce that to a minute. But then again, there's already a time limit. Anyway, uh, delivering lineouts. Again, this is a little bit, maybe they need to be more specific because I don't really remember lineouts being slow, like delivering the lineout being slow. But I do remember like teams wasting time setting up the lineout and walking to the lineout. So again, uh, maybe the clock should just be paused when the teams are walking slowly to the lineout and then like restart the clock. When two teams are set and the referee says throw the ball in because the actual you know process of throwing the ball in uh it's not really that slow to be honest i'd never thought like oh that guy's taking too long to throw the ball in. in fact if it takes too long the referee will call that out anyway so 
yeah, uh, I don't know. Anyway, that's what they're going to be doing. Uh, so next up, this is something that kind of blows my mind a little bit. So a crooked throw from the line out. So if the line out is not straight, as long as the opposition is not contesting, that won't be a penalty anymore. So uh, I thought that was that's a bit mind-blowing. But anyway, the, the next one, that's really mind-blowing to me. Um, they... Uh, there, there will be no yellow cards for deliberate knockdowns, okay? This literally says there will be no yellow cards for deliberate knockdowns. First of all, firstly, you can clearly tell these people have no idea about rugby laws. There's no such thing as deliberate knockdowns. Deliberate knockdowns is not a penalty at all in rugby, okay? Deliberate knockdown is not a penalty at all. Deliberate knock on is a penalty. There's a difference. Because if you knock the ball down and it goes backwards, that's not a penalty, period. If you knock the ball forward, whether it's down, up, left and right, as long as the ball goes forward, it's a penalty. It's a deliberate penalty, okay? So obviously the people who came up with this don't really know the laws themselves. So yeah, uh, there will be no yellow card for different lockdowns. Duh, that's already the case, mate. Uh, it's already not a penalty. So I don't know what they're gonna. I, 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 I don't know what they're trying to do here, but that is just. I don't know what's going on here. So uh, next up, there's only gonna be three phases of advantage. So just think about this for a second, right? This whole thing is about like speeding up the game. Uh, so if you only have three phases to play a penalty advantage, what's what do you think people, team is gonna do? They're just gonna put the ball down and take the penalty goal, right? So if you want to speed the game up, you need to have more than three phases. Having three phases just means that the team just gonna go, "Yep, we'll, we'll, we'll take the penalty. We'll take the penalty." Let's, hey, Chuck! Hey, hey, hey! Foley, drop the ball so we can take the three, please. Yeah, right, right. And then you're gonna slow the game down, even actually slow the game down because it's either gonna be a penalty kick or goes for the lineouts. Because they don't want to waste the penalty. That's stupid. Stupid. So, I don't know who came up with this. But that is actually just mind-blowingly stupid. Uh, anyway, this also this game also going to be uh, trialed in the modified version. Between the Brumbies and the Waratahs in a preseason game. Informal preseason game. But yeah. Um, actually blows my mind a bit. How they could come up with this. Like, especially the deliberate knockdown one. Like, that's not actually a penalty. Deliberate knockdown is actually not a yellow card. Deliberate knock on is a yellow card. But uh, anyway, and um, blows my mind. Uh, so let's move to South Africa. Uh, first up, some big celebrations of the Springbok fans. Rassi Rasmus has returned to rugby officially after his 12 months ban. That's been really quick, 12 months. Uh, so obviously he was banned for criticizing Nick Berry in the Lions tour test in a video. That he released, uh, he was banned like completely from doing anything for like three months or something, and then he was banned from attending match day events till like 30th of September, which is just a few days ago. So his return uh, immediately, he has addressed the Springboks, obviously, and then he went to the Sharks game, and then he went on Twitter to try to trigger as many people as he possibly can. So, obviously, the some of the things that I talk about the Springboks is what we really care about. The Springboks has the uh, November tests coming up, three tests against France, England, and uh, France, Italy, and England, in that order. And then also, uh, from Razzie's pers perspective, uh, really importantly, the Springboks B team is going to get um, two midweek tests against Monster and the Bristol Bears. Uh, so, so Rassi basically talked about how in 2020 they didn't play rugby at all. He felt like there was a lot of time missed for development, and these games against club rugby gives the uh, for the B team gives them some time to catch up on that development time that they lost. So it's quite important for him. Uh, and also he talked about uh, you know yeah building to the Rugby World Cup, and now the fact that the, there's also the Springbok B team is with the different coaching staff and everything. He's also going to be overlooking the two teams uh, by himself. Yeah, he's basically overlooking two teams that both the Springboks and the Springbok 
B team. Um, obviously, as we mentioned, Rassi is the king of social media. He knows how to trigger people. So he kind of like uh, sent out this, uh, uh, this, uh, this guy's grievances about World Rugby banning, uh, banning Rassi Erasmus. And uh, he basically, yeah, this is a very over-the-top take on what happened, uh, including some accusations of potential racism at World Rugby. But Rassi, the master of, uh, of social media, knows how to trigger people. He links this on his Twitter to uh, for the world to see. So, well done. He uh, he's done really well uh, in that in that regards. Rassi, good to see you back, man. You are you are awesome. So next up we have a uh, hundred Pollard. He this is a little bit of a contentious thing as well. So Pollard had a knee injury from rugby championship and it was sent back to his club. And uh, and there was some talks earlier this week or last week, that he was going to return to play for Leinster, the Leinster Tigers, I believe. Uh, and a lot of people thought this was going to be too early, like, premature. Uh, and sure enough, he returns, and he played 27 minutes and injured the knee again. And, uh, yeah, the knee fled, fled up again during the match against Saracens. Uh, on And, uh, basically, this is not looking good. This is quite concerning, because... If you, in, if you, you know, re-injure the same body part twice in short period, uh, that could spell like a long-term issue for him. So, yeah, this is um, uh, not looking good for the Springboks because Henry Pollard is a really important player for the Springbok team. Uh, another guy, uh, RG Snyman, he's actually rem uh, expected, he has like an injury as well, I think a knee injury as well, and he was being out for like, you know, a year or something now, maybe over a year now, and there were some talks that he was going to be ready to return for the November Test Series for the Springboks, uh, but his club gave him, gave out the latest update for him that he's still not good, and he's probably not going to be ready to play at all in November. Yeah. Uh, next up, uh, obviously, the Springboks. Players named the, their own... So like the, the, the players named their own Player of the Year, uh, and it's named that the players have agreed that Lukam Yu Am is their player of the year. So obviously they consider a lot of things from their, you know, their, you know, uh, what do you call it? Obviously there's a lot of stories behind the scenes amongst the players, you know, the club rug involvement with the club rugby that we don't really know about. So Lukam Yu Am, for me, I thought his performance against the All Blacks as on the wing was actually the best, uh, like the best winger in, in South Africa. Uh, but... Nevertheless, uh, he's named the Player of the Year. Uh, some other people were nominated. Ibn Esbeth, Malcolm Marks, Evan Roos, and Damien Valemsa. Why is his name not highlighted like the rest? But for me, I thought the best player for the Springboks uh, is Ibn Esbeth. Let me know your thoughts. I do think that Ibn Esbeth is the most talented and uh, best player for the Springboks. Uh, he, I think he probably get overlooked a bit because he doesn't score that many tries. But I do think that the work that he does is absolutely um, spectacular, spectacular. Uh, so Evan Roos, as we talked about, has been given a yellow card for a bit of a elbow to the face. I do think, I do think that this is a bit rough. He, yeah, he kind of like rough handles the guy out of the rock and then lands on him, as you can see here. He lands on top of him with his elbow on his chin and that looked bad but I do feel like this is a bit rough he didn't follow up with a punch or anything uh, and uh, yeah gets a yellow card for that something that now I think back in the days nobody would care but nowadays uh, the TMO gets onto that right away uh, obviously with that being said the URC currently I think three rounds now and Springboks teams has been doing exceptionally well it's looking like gonna be another dominant year for the South Africans so far uh, the Springboks teams has been undefeated against Northerner teams. Uh, only loss they suffered was the Lions, aka the Cats, against the Sharks. So against one of their own teams, it's the only game that they've lost. So let's quickly have a look at the bo board. So the uh, undefeated Leinster at the top, Bulls at the top also undefeated. Uh, Ulster third uh, after losing one game. Stormers undefeated two out of two. Sharks undefeated two out of two so far. And uh, Lions, 
lost one game against the Sharks, I think it was, or maybe, the, I think it was the Sharks. So the only game that the Lions lost is against the fellow South Africans, but everybody else has been uh, very, very good for the, for the South Africans. So we shall see how that goes. Uh, also on the weekend, the B teams played, the Japan B team versus Australia B. Uh, this was a pretty close game. That's, Japan was well in it until Australia pulled away late in the match, but you know, the B team. Uh, All Blacks is also gonna have a B team come out uh, and follow suit of everybody else in the world. We won't talk any more about that. Uh, also, Ireland, this has been coming out already a few weeks ago. It's going to have a B team travel down to South Africa to play some games there. Uh, Andy Farrell will not be attending because obviously it's a B team. Um, so the, yeah, every nation is trying to polish up their B teams and try to give some more uh, time for some of the players who don't get to, don't get to start very often in the A team. And uh, yeah, uh, there's some update, injury update for the All Blacks. Quinn Tupaya, one of my favorite players from the All Black team, uh, obviously suffered that huge, you know, horrendous, yeah, injury from um, from Darcy Swain. Uh, it's it's came out that he's suffered an ACL tear, and it's gonna be out for nine months, and this will put him just before the Rugby World Cup. So yeah. Uh, the chances of him come back and be healthy and ready to go for the World Cup is very, very slim. Very, very unfortunate. And uh, yeah, uh, a lot of people thought that six-week ban for Darcy for that is probably too short. Yeah, maybe, uh, yeah, that's uh, it's, it's, it's a tough one. Uh, also, Jordy Barrett has confirmed that he signed with the Hurricanes to 2025, which is really good because uh, his brother, Bowden, has been some talks that he might be heading to Racing 92. So, uh, obviously at the moment, the fly half of Racing 92 is Finn Russell, and his contract is coming up due soon, and there's currently no talks of him extending the contract. In fact, there's talks of him uh, potentially heading off to Japan. Uh, there was a, a few key puzzles. There's a few, like, like uh, you know, like wheels that's been turning. That's kind of lead to Finn Russell potentially being removed. Uh, one of the things is that the Lancaster, the former England head coach, is uh, heading to Racing 92. And one of the, the things that people were kind of speculating is that Lancaster do not get along with the style that Finn Russell brings to the team. So Finn Russell is kind of like a free spirit kind of guy. Um, whereas Lancaster is more of a, yeah, like a comfortable, like Finn Russell is, is um uh is kind of more of a uh uh what is it uh, uh yeah Lancaster always been hot on team culture uh might not necessarily gel with Finn, Finn Ross is more individually possible Finn Ross is kind of like a like a, you know more of a more individual kind of guy he just does his own theme much into the drum of a bit of his own drum sort of thing whereas Lancaster is more of a you know regimented kind of kind of head coach so a lot of people thought that this might not fit which is one of the reasons why they probably wanted to you know just take the opportunity with the expiration of his contract to let him go and have Bowden Barrett step into the spot uh, obviously Lancaster like we mentioned that he's going to 90 Racing 92 his replacement at Leinster is talked about being Wayne Smith from New Zealand, an uh, ex-All Black. Uh, and then we're gonna move forward to more some more news from New Zealand. So Caleb Trask, a guy that was playing for the Chiefs, uh, it's gonna be squeezed out of Super Rugby. He's going to be going to um, Japan. I do feel like some of these players will probably be, they need to figure out a way to keep them in Super Rugby, like maybe play for like an Australian side for the Western Force or something, because he's uh, quite a talented player. Uh, just because he's not going to be given opportunity to play for the All Blacks, he has opted to, to go overseas for for for, for 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 you know for some more money essentially. So only 23 years of age, uh, and uh, yeah, he's just looking at the return of DMAC. He's not going to be getting much time for the Chiefs, and he's going to be overseas. So I do think that's quite a bit of a talent leak from New Zealand there. Uh, obviously, Wales, there's some uh, plant you know. Uh, the Rugby World Cup is coming up. Usually before the Rugby World Cup, there'll be some warm-up matches between the nations. And uh, so Wales is going to be playing England two games 
and one game against the Springboks in the warm-up in the Principality Stadium just before uh, going over to France. And obviously, we talk about, I think, England on the other hand. Yeah, England on the other hand will be playing against Fiji, Wales, doubleheader, uh, before heading over to... Um, before heading over to to France. So a little bit of a change for England. Uh, obviously, we've talked about last week that the Worcester Tigers, uh, Worcester Warriors, sorry, uh, they were caught with some financial issues that they were basically removed from the, uh, from by the, by the you know, the, the, all the games have been suspended by the RFU and basically the two matches that they were going to be having with the Harlequins and uh, Gloucester are both being cancelled. Uh, basically, it seems like they're going to be, they have a $25 million of, not million, million, uh, what is it, 25 million pounds of debt with 6 million unpaid in taxes. Uh, and also there has been no proof that they're going to be able to pay the players' payroll. So yeah, a lot of players are leaving. Four players have already jumped ship, uh, including the skipper, Ted Hill. And uh, yeah, it's this basically over for uh, for the for the Warriors. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's kind of a bit of follow up. Uh, also, the English Premiership, Gallagher's Premiership, also saw a lot of tries being scored in the first you know few weeks, couple of weeks of the game. So 100, 141 tries being scored already in uh, three weeks. So that's a lot of tries in three weeks. And Eddie Jones is not happy. He basically said that uh, if you want to play for England, you must be able to make tackles. So having poor defense is something that's not going to go by by Eddie. And obviously, yes, international rugby defense is it's it's the king to winning you know rugby world cup um, semi final and finals. That is more important than scoring tries. A lot of times, goal kicking comes down to the difference between winning and losing. So Eddie Jones has issued the warning to to his team. Uh, next up, we've got three England players already injured at the camp. So England obviously has a camp coming up to pre prepare for the November Test Series. Uh, Jamie George, Guy Porter and Jack Walker have all been withdrawn from the camp due to injuries on the weekend. So Jamie George is the one that uh, I'm sad the most because I really like it. Jamie George. Uh, the big hooker. I like watching him run the ball. Uh, so he's going to be out. And uh, as a result, Eddie Jones has caught up three different players. George uh, McGigan, Adam Ratwin, and Jack Singleton has been caught up. I'm not familiar with any of these three players. Uh, first up, oh yeah, and also rugby is doing quite well. It seems like in Wales, uh, the ticket was... Tickets were released against for the Six Nations test next year against England, and it was immediately sold out within hours. So they're also expecting like huge turnouts for the November series, including games against New Zealand. So if they sell out all the games, which is against um, Argentina, Georgia, and Australia, if they sell out everything, it's gonna be like half a million tickets. I don't think they will sell out everything, but the All Blacks game probably should be sold out. But yeah, it's looking good for Wales and their rugby. Uh, Wayne Pivak, despite losing at home to Italy, seems to still have the support of uh, of a lot of the diehard Welsh fans behind him. Next up, uh, Bandiaki has been suspended for six weeks after a uh, dangerous clean-out, it looks like, entering Iraq or more. So, dangerous clean-out, soaring banned for six weeks. And then if he attends... Uh, an intervention program by World Rugby. His ban will be reduced by one week and he will be able to play against Australia potentially on the 19th of November. But yeah, that's really weird how you can attend a course and then uh, have your suspension reduced by a week. Uh, in Fiji, there was a bit of a controversy. The Fijian Sevens obviously won the Rugby World Cup Sevens tournament. Uh, and as a result, they kind of went home and used the trophy for a bit of a like promotions and this was called out by basically will rugby saying that the cup is uh the melrose cup is not used for political purposes or um un, what do they call it um what do they call it um 
unsanctioned events, using the unsanctioned events for display. So yeah, so there was a couple of incidences. Firstly, uh, obviously the some politicians was trying to like host a party to try to use the the to use the trophy to promote their own profile, which was caught out. But second thing, that's a little bit painful for the players. Uh, there was a developer, China Village Estate Development, that was basically building like some residential apartments, and they were going to um, give free apartments worth of two million dollars, fourteen apartments to the players uh, for free. And this was cancelled because this was obviously considered to be like illegal, not illegal, like inappropriate advertisement using um, the Melrose Cup essentially. And they basically, yeah, the players have lost free apartments because of um, because of this. Because obviously the development, com uh, the, the the develop, you know, what do they call it? The the developers is trying to use that uh, for for marketing purposes for their own to sell their own apartments uh, and obviously there was some concussions lawsuit that's been carrying out this is going to court soon in ireland uh not really sure yeah anyway there's some old timers as three irish players been reviewed but you can go read this if you want pretty boring legal boring stuff in my opinion but uh yeah but that's happening. The the lawsuit is proceeding in Ireland. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching, guys. That's pretty much the news this week. Like and comment, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts about the uh, the law adjustment in Australian rugby. Maybe read the law first before you try to change it or adjust it, okay? Uh, let me know your thoughts, guys. Thank you for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, see you guys next week. Cheers.